In the last video, we saw an architecture of a typical NoSQL database, where the database was split into multiple partitions. There was a component called proxy, which was responsible for routing the requests based on a column called partition key. And each of the partitions had multiple copies of the data called replicas for fault tolerant purposes. Now let's try to understand CAP theorem in the context of this architecture. Before we jump into that, we need to understand where these replicas are actually located because that will have major implications on the theorem itself. Now let's say this box represents a server where our replica resides, which means it stores the data of one replica and it processes the reads and writes for that particular replica. This server typically resides in a metal container or a metal housing called a rack. This rack has multiple servers and it also has a switch at the top. This network switch helps these servers talk to each other within a single rack. A data center can have hundreds of such racks where each rack has its own switch, but it also has multiple network switches at a central level so that a server within a single rack can talk to a server in a different rack. This is an image of a Google data center where you can see the rows of racks and the switches at the top of each rack. A single data center is called an availability zone and at least three such availability zones combined to make up a region. And each cloud provider will have a map like this, which will show you all the regions available for that cloud provider. Now let's apply that knowledge of replica location to the concept of network partition. Let's say all three replicas in a partition is stored in a single rack. In this case, if the network switch of the rack goes down, then all three replicas will not be reachable from outside and also replicas R1, R2, R3 will not be able to talk to each other. If the replicas are stored across multiple racks, but within the same data center, then again, if a single switch goes down, then that particular replica will not be reachable. If the replicas are stored in different data centers, in this example, we have three availability zones, which means three data centers. Let's say R1 is in data center one, R2 in data center two, and R3 in data center three. Again, if the central switch of the data center goes down for some reason, then the first replica will not be reachable by the other replicas or by the external requests. If you store the replicas across regions, where in this case, R1 replica is stored in region one, and R2 and R3 replicas are stored in region two. And if there is a problem in the communication between two regions, then again, these replicas can become unavailable. So network partition in a technical sense means because the network is down, we are unable to communicate between two separate nodes. But in the context of CAP theorem, network partition is a bit misleading. There are multiple other reasons because of which two nodes may not be able to communicate with each other. So instead of network partition, when you think about CAP theorem, think from a availability of the node itself to process your requests. Now let's understand what is consistency. Now since each partition has three copies of data, which we are calling replicas, consistency should ideally mean all three of them have the same copy of data. But again, that is a little bit misleading. A better way to think about consistency is from a client point of view. Irrespective of where these replicas are located or how many replicas does a database have, consistency should be viewed from the user's point of view. So in this example, let's say there are three replicas where R1 and R2 are in a single region of Mumbai, but in different data centers, which is why AZ1 and AZ2. While the R3 replica is in a completely different region, let's say Singapore, when the user reads the data, it needs to be consistent, which means it should be up to date. And it, when it writes the data, it should go into all these three copies. Similarly, the location of the user itself also doesn't matter. So multiple users from different locations might try to access the same data. And all these users should be able to see the same consistent view of data. And similar to consistency, 
availability is also a concept which should be looked at from a client point of view which means user should be able to process their reads and writes irrespective of the location of the replicas or the locations of the users themselves in this case if a replica goes down we need to determine whether the system as a whole is still available to perform the reads and writes so with these three concepts clear cap theorem now will be straightforward to understand cap theorem says that in distributed systems you can choose only two of these three characteristics consistency partition tolerance and availability so let's start with the database which chooses partition tolerance and availability let's say we are building an application which allows two users to share a shopping cart let's say in this case the cart 32 resides in partition 1 and which has three replicas r1 r2 r3 out of which r1 and r2 reside in one region of mumbai while r3 resides in a different region of singapore and let's assume there are two users one from london one from singapore uh, both of them trying to access the same cart let's say there is a network partition between the mumbai and the singapore regions where the singapore region replica is not available in this case if there is a write attempted by the london user to add an item of apple in the shopping cart the replicas r1 and r2 will get updated while the replica r3 in singapore will still have the older item even though this replica was not updated still the proxy will return a successful write to the user similarly if a singapore user wants to add orange as an item to the shopping cart they will issue and write and since the network partition still exists this proxy will not be able to connect to the mumbai region singapore region replica r3 will be able to add orange to the item so now there is an inconsistency of data where r1 and r2 have a different understanding of value and r3 has a different understanding of value after writing to a single region the proxy will return a successful write response to the user in singapore if the london user issues a read it will return the items of only apple while if the singapore user issues the same read they will get the items of only orange uh, so the data is clearly inconsistent between the two having said that both read operations and write operations were successfully completed which means the data was always available to perform the functions of reads and writes once the network partition corrects itself the database internally will have to do the reconciliation of the data where r1 r2 and r3 will talk to each other and will exchange the items they have in their own shopping carts again the database will have to apply the correct algorithm to update the items which in this case is just adding both the items from the carts and because of this eventually r1 r2 and r3 all have the same consistent view of the data which is why it is called an eventually consistent database now the algorithm which is used to reconcile the data will vary based on which database is used and what is the domain of the application itself so that is a database which shows availability when there is a network partition let's check the next combination where the database chooses consistency over availability whenever there is a network partition this time let's think of an application or a domain where two users are allowed to share a bank account again there is a network partition where the singapore region replica is not available if the london user issues a write to add 200 to the balance the database will recognize that it cannot update all three replicas and it will return an unsuccessful response so instead of allowing inconsistent data the database will choose to fail the write itself in many databases you can allow for a quorum writes instead where for each write it will ensure if majority of the replicas are available for the write so in this case out of the three replicas two replicas are available for the write so it will update the balances of r1 and r2 replicas and return a successful response note that in this case the data is inconsistent from a replica point of view whenever there is a read let's say a read issued by the singapore user so since only a minority of replicas are available the database instead of returning an stale value or inconsistent value of 300 will choose to return an 
unavailable or an unsuccessful response. And this is why it is important to look at consistency from a user point of view, not from a replica point of view, which means the user, irrespective of their location, will either see consistent data or the read itself will fail. Again, if the same read is done by the London user, since majority of replicas are available to read, it will read from both of these, find the value of 500 and return a successful balance back to the user. This brings up an important point in CAP theorem. Only a subset of users might be impacted because of this. And also we are talking only about partition one here, which has three replicas. The partition two to partition 10 might still be working fine. So the number of users which might be impacted in this case would potentially be very low. So when a database chooses consistency over availability in case of network partition, whenever there are writes, either you do not accept writes or you ensure there is a majority quorum and same with reads. Either you do not accept reads because some of the partitions are unavailable or you ensure that is a majority quorum for reads also. And let's look at the last combination where a database chooses consistency and availability but does not allow a network partition. Let's take the same example as we had before. In this case, the network partition itself is not allowed. But in distributed systems with commodity hardware, it is very difficult to achieve the same. And that is why this combination of characteristics only apply to a single node database. In which case the distributed communication is not required. And that is why conceptually there is no concept of network partition itself. Before we close out, just beware Cap theorem is very simplistic in nature. It overlooks a lot of data points. Don't think about cap theorem only as two out of three. There are a lot of other nuances in the cap theorem, which it doesn't take into consideration, which are all applicable in the modern NoSQL as well as the new SQL databases. And in closing, this is the cap theorem in a nutshell. Pause the video, read this. If you understand this, then you've understood the full cap theorem. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.